Welcome to the Woodwork Experience. Before we get into it today, I just want to give a shout out to my main man, Charlie. Such a gentleman and a scholar and just a straight up legend. Anyway, let's get into it. Today, we're going to go through and make a bench hook. This will be broken down into a number of video tutorials, so make your way through them and enjoy the process. Bench hooks are a super nifty tool which can be used for cutting as well as chiseling. The very first step is to check that your timber is the correct length. It should be 240 millimeters long. The easiest way to do this is to place your metal rule up against one end. It should be close to the upper edge. This will ensure that your ruler runs perpendicular to the side, resulting in a more accurate reading. From there, using your ruler, mark in 30 millimeters from each edge. Ensure to keep the ruler close to the top edge to maximize precision and accuracy. Once you've done it to one end, repeat on the other. It is time to get your tri-square or in my case, engineer square. To use a square, place your thumb against its back whilst ensuring your forefinger holds down its blade. Then use the other three fingers to apply pressure against the back. When you are happy with its location, Mark it using a sharp pencil. Once you've done this, repeat the process on the other end. I will now install an existing bench hook into a vise. We will use this to support the timber whilst cutting. If you do not have a bench hook, then you can clamp your timber off the edge of your bench. It is time to mark the off cut sections. To do this, we'll use a pencil and lightly draw an X on each end. X's often indicate scrap, however, we will use these pieces later in the project, so please do not throw them out. To use your bench hook effectively, align your markings with the edge of the bench hook support. You will then get your trusty clamp and clamp your timber to the bench hook. This will reduce any movement whilst sawing. You do not need to over tighten the clamp, you just want to make sure that your timber isn't going to sway or move whilst cutting. Get your tenon saw and place it just on the scrap side of the line. From there, go through and place your thumb up against the saw blade and the timber. This is going to act as a support. Your blade should be angled at about 30 degrees. After pulling back three times, you should have a notch. Place the blade back in the notch, place your thumb against the blade and continue to cut ensuring to use the entire length of the blade. This time, use a forward and backwards motion. As you begin to cut through the timber, lower the angle of the blade until you are cutting horizontally. Cut all the way through the timber and then repeat on the other end. We will now prepare the timber to remove 20 millimeters from its overall length. To do this, line your metal rule up against one edge and mark back 20 millimeters. From there, get your trusty square. Make sure that its back is firmly pressed against the machine cut side and then mark the line. Make sure to do the same process on the other piece. It is time to cut off the smaller piece. To do this, hold it back against your bench hook and this time use your thumb. You could use a clamp if you'd like, but it's small enough that you probably aren't required. Because you're using your thumb to hold your timber in place, you will use your forefinger to go through and lean up against the saw blade. Pull back your saw three times and then cut the whole way through your timber. Please make sure that your thumb is not beneath the saw. Otherwise, that will result in a trip to the hospital. Once you've completed it on one piece, go through and complete the same process on the other. After cutting off those two sections, we need to go through and mark 25 millimeters in from each edge. Grab your square and hold it up against the machine cut edge. This reduces chances of human error. Repeat this process on both ends of each piece. Measure the width of your piece and then go ahead and mark at the halfway point. 
as you'll see, I'm marking a cross, which allows for precision when drilling. Once you've done it to one end, do it to the rest of the ends on both pieces. It is time to drill these holes out with a 4.5 millimeter bit. We could use a hand drill. However, for precision, a pedestal drill is more effective. This is the end of the first tutorial. Tune into the next one to continue the process of making a bench hook.